Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the great joy to celebrate this great and wonderful Franciscan feast today of Saint Bonaventure, Franciscan Doctor of the Church. Today, July the 14th, marks this wonderful feast of the Seraphic Doctor of the Church. Saint Bonaventure is known for his leadership also of the Franciscans and his great intellectual contributions to both theology and philosophy. He was born in a place called Bagnaria in Tuscany in Italy. He's widely believed to have been born in the year 1221, but some say it was as early as 1217. Sources recount in his youth that Saint Bonaventure was named and was cured by the intercession of St. Francis of Assisi, like we heard with the story of the mother of St. Francis Solano yesterday. It was reported that his mother, when the child was sick, had no hope of healing. She presented him then to St. Francis, who was renowned in Italy at that time for both his splendid sanctity and his miracles. It was said she implored the aid of his prayers and made a vow that if the child was saved, she would give him to the Franciscan order. The holy man consoled the mother and obtained from God the cure of her son, even to the astonishment of the physicians who had deemed this disorder incurable. At the sight of this miraculous cure, he said in the Italian language, St. Francis, O buona ventura, which means how fortunate from whence came the name Bonaventure. He foretold St. Francis that the child would become great, a great light in the Church of God, and through him his order would receive great increase in sanctity. He went on to join the Franciscan order, the Friars Minor, in the year 1243. After making his vows, he went to Paris to study. He was very intellectual, a genius. He was taught first by, we know him in England, Alexander of Hales, an English doctor and a Franciscan, and later by John of Rochelle. While in Paris, he became great friends with St. Thomas Aquinas, with whom he received the degree of doctor at the University of Paris. In the bull of Pope Sixtus V, called Triumphantus Jerusalem, he says in relation to Apocalypse 11, verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks lighting the house of God, who both with the fat of charity and the light of science entirely illuminate the whole church. This is what we read in the scripture today in the gospel to be the light of the world, both St. Thomas and St. Bonaventure at the same time. St. Bonaventure also developed a friendship with the King of France, St. Louis. In 1257, he was chosen to serve as a superior at the age, the very tender age of 35 of the Friars Minor. This is a position here he held, in fact, for 17 years, bringing peace and order. His impact was so great that today he is sometimes referred to as the second founder of the Franciscans. Taking on the position after a period of extraordinary expansion for the order, St. Bonaventure then worked to preserve a spirit of unity. He calmed the threat of internal dissension that arose over differences in interpreting the message of St. Francis of Assisi. Central to his work was his great understanding that the study of philosophy and theology did not oppose 
the call to poverty that was so central to the Franciscan spirituality. He then, St. Bonaventure, proposed a unified and collected text, text regulating the daily life of the Friars Minor. The text was accepted and ratified in the year 1260 by the general chapter of the Order of Narbonne. Wishing to present an authentic image of this, the life and teaching of their founder, he zealously started then to collect documents about Sir, the great St. Francis of Assisi and her testimonies of those who had actually known him. From all of this information, he compiled a biography of the saint that was adopted as his official biography by the general chapter of the Friars Minor in 1263. As Thomas Aquinas, Bonaventure was a truly great teacher, philosopher and theologian in his own right but he was very, very gentle, sweet, and very humble. Yet it was this most striking him in his humility and his respectful submission to superiors. He never pointed to himself, but always to his great friend and spiritual father, Francis of Assisi, and to the Lord Jesus, who Bonaventure was convinced Francis revealed in an extraordinary manner. Among his works then, this biography, which is called The Major Legend, it opened up for all the extraordinary holiness of Francis and invites the reader into an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not a biography, at least in its strictest sense. It does not follow any chronological order of the life of St. Francis, but St. Bonaventure in his wisdom rights of the little poor man of Assisi from first-hand experience. He says that St. Francis had a great love for the Holy Scripture. He lived the Scripture. He was a man a dynamic in, with a dynamic relationship with the living Word, Jesus Christ. Through an intimate communion of prayer and the continual prayer reading of the Scriptures, Francis thus became a living letter for, of Christ for others with a life of penance, conversion, renunciation, self-emptying, transforming, and redemptive love. At the center of this legend, then, we find crucified Christ, the Word made flesh, the love incarnate, stretched out on the wooden altar, the tree of life, which the, is the ladder of ascent and descent. Saint Bonaventure also wrote numeral, numerous mystical and aesthetical treatises, most famously The Soul's Journey into God and his mystical treatise The Triple Way, which we all should read, whereby the human soul undergoes three hierarchical actions, purgation or cleansing which leads to peace, illumination which is enlightenment, which leads to truth, and finally into union, perfection, which leads to charity. In the year 1273, he was appointed by Pope Gregory X as Cardinal and Bishop of Albano. And this is interesting also, he had already refused in his humility the same, an offer by the same Pope to be, to take a position in the Holy See in this country in York, to be the Archbishop, but he rejected this offer. So he was now Pope Gregory as Cardinal and Bishop of Albano. The Pope also asked him to help prepare the Second Ecumenical Council at Lyon in the year 1274, and he worked to prepare the Council, but he never saw its completion. Because he died on July the 15th, 1274, when the council was still in session. He was canonized in 1482 by Pope Sixtus IV, and Sixtus V, the next pope, gave him the title of the Seraphic Doctor because of his devotion to the Seraphic Father St. Francis and the Franciscan way of life. So we had these two great lights, both dying at the same time, 1274, St. Thomas of Aquinas and St. Bonaventure. 
What can we learn about this great Franciscan saint today? Well, we said his angelic sweetness, his love for Jesus Christ crucified in contemplation, and above all, his great and profound humility. Listen to this beautiful story now of the humility of Saint Bonaventure. There was a contest that never was. In the year 1264, Pope Urban IV instituted the Feast of Corpus Christi. The Holy Father wanted a special mass and an office written especially for this new important feast of the Holy Eucharist. It was a difficult and essential task that he appointed to both of these giant lights of the church, Bonaventure and Aquinas. But the Holy Father reserved for himself the choice of which was the greatest writing which would be used. So on the appointed day, both saints, both with their manuscript under their arm, came before the Vicar of Christ. Who went first? Thomas Aquinas. He was first in kneeling before the Pope began to read what he had written. Both Urban IV and Bonaventure listened with tears of emotion to the beautiful work of the saint. And while St. Thomas was still reading, what did Bonaventure do? St. Bonaventure turned aside and tore his manuscript into small pieces. He destroyed his own manuscript. When the term came for St. Bonaventure to read, he admitted what he had done and told them that he was no longer in possession of his manuscript. St. Bonaventure explained that he considered St. Thomas's work alone worthy to be used at this most holy feast, therefore making it unnecessary to take his own poor work into account. And now for centuries on this beautiful, wonderful, sublime feast of Corpus Christi, it is heard the heavenly hymn written by the hands of the mass of St. Thomas Aquinas. And while no one ever will know what inspiring prayer other than God, what St. Bonaventure wrote, while God is greatly glorified and pleased with the work of St. Thomas Aquinas, he is equally glorified and pleased with the great humility of St. Bonaventure. So when you hear these words, perhaps daily, tantum ergo in the benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, or Salutaris Hostia, this wonderful hymn, remember the humble act performed by Saint Bonaventure, who desired that this feast be the most beneficial to the Catholic Church and to give the greatest glory to God. We also see the wonderful humility of Saint Bonaventure when he was appointed Cardinal by Pope Gregory X. The Cardinal Cup was given to him in his convent, Franciscan convent, which is called Bosco Frati, near in Tuscany, near Florence. And as they tried to present the Cardinal Cup to him, he was washing the dishes and he told them to hang it on the branch of a tree and wait until he finished his menial task as a Franciscan friar. Consider then where this great saint derived his ardent love for God. It was keeping his eyes above all on Jesus crucified on the crucifix and meditating the sufferings of Christ. The wounds of Jesus, he said, are arrows that wound the hardest hearts and flames that kindles the, cold, the coldest souls. He said that this is where he learned all of his theology and philosophy at the foot of the cross. Whoever truly contemplates our suffering savior on the cross he said, can hardly yield to sin. Wisdom is sought then at the foot of the cross. Be conformed then, dear brothers and sisters, in Christ today to Jesus crucified, our Savior, as the seraphic father, Saint Francis was, and his beloved son, the seraphic doctor, Saint Bonaventure, and the blessed Virgin Mary, amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.